Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going to talk about how to power your 24 volt pumps off a 12 volt battery. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. Now you know I'm very big on battery backups. They can absolutely save your tank, your coral, your fish. I think they are one of the more essential things and upgrades you can do to your tank. Now on my bigger systems, I have my Vortex hooked up to a 12 volt battery and I can do this directly through the controller, which is awesome. That's one reason I love them. Now a lot of other people have pumps that don't have that battery backup port, but a lot of them are also 24 volt. So how do you power your 24 volt pump off a 12 volt battery? And today that's what we're gonna dig into. Now I was actually looking at my Nano beside me and my AI Blade, 24 volts. My Axis Pump, 24 volts. Uh, if I, Nero Powerhead, 24 volts. They're all 24 volts. So one of the cool things that I picked up is a DC to DC converter. Now this guy takes 12 volts and boosts it up to 24 volts. And this one does it at five amps. You can get different amp ratings, but this one converter could literally power everything on my tank, which I think is a really cool way to go. It's considering I can run the whole tank off battery. And the 50 amp hours would probably run it for any common power outage I would have. Now, phase two, we're gonna get into how we can automate this to cut it over, but for now, I just wanna show you guys how you can do a bit of a manual battery backup. Now, the heart of this is gonna be a 50 amp hour battery by Power Queen. Now, this is lithium iron phosphate. I love these batteries because they last so long. Thousands and thousands and thousands, you know, upwards of 10,000 charge cycles, which means you're gonna get, you know, 10 plus years out of a battery. That, and they're super light, which is awesome. Uh, now, Power Queen did send this one to me, so shout out to them. Thank you guys very much, I appreciate it. And it's one of the things that helped inspire this product that's been kind of on my to-do list. The other key essential part is this DC to DC converter. And again, we gotta boost it up to 24 volts. Uh, so what we're gonna start, we, very, very simple to wire this up. So we have our input and our output. So we got our positive and our negative. So we're going to start off by putting ring terminals on these so we can easily connect it to our battery. Now for this we just really got to find a ring terminal that fits the size of the bolt that you're using on your battery. And isn't too big for your wires, you can actually crimp it properly. Grab your crimp tool and squeeze. And crimp the next one. Make sure you got a nice solid connector. We have your input, which on the side you can see plus and minus on the end. So we're crimp our connector onto each one of those and then our output. Now for the output, we would want to convert this to a barrel plug since that's what most of our pumps are going to take. Now on most batteries, this little dotted line should mean that's our positive, but I'm just going to double check it. Yep, so what I'm doing is just testing the continuity. So the one without the line is our ground or our negative, which is the outside of the barrel plug. Um, so with this, now we can either solder or crimp them together, or we can use some kind of a connector to make it removable. I have some connectors, so we'll use these guys. Now with the barrel plug, I am going to strip a little more off of this guy. Then again, we're going to use our positive as the stripey one. And because this one, the wire is a little bit thinner on this side, I am going to kind of double strip it and fold it over just to make it a bit thicker. If I do that, fold it over, get a bit of twist, and it gives a little thicker wire to crimp onto. On this one, not required, but I am going to put opposite connectors on it just so there's no chance of accidentally hooking it up backwards. Now, uh, when we're looking at our output, um, it says we got a B and a Y, so our Y is our positive. So we know which one to crimp on here. And last but not least, our negative or our ground. And that is the basis of our battery powered solution. So now let's hook it up to the battery terminals. Of course, if you guys do want to build one of these, I will put links to everything in the description. And they are sponsored or affiliate links, so they do help out the channel if you do choose to purchase through them. And if you do, much appreciated. So now let's test this out by hooking up to our Nero. And just a quick reminder to figure out if this project's going to work for you, take a look at the power supply for your pump. And in this case, it's 24 volt, 1 amp. And I have 24 volts, 5 amps to work with. So I now have plenty of header and plenty of power to work with. We got our backup power built. So say you have a power situation, I could then unplug my wall wart and I could plug in our battery backup solution. And we should see the controller light up. And powerhead kicks on. Um, so it is a really easy way to build backup power. So fairly inexpensive and a very solid solution. I mean, this Power Queen 50 amp hour battery is gonna let us run for a long time on a Nero. Um, but in the case of this pump, I have a 24 volt access pump as a return pump. So I would just run the return pump off battery backup. And I think that's the solution I'm gonna do for this tank. 
Um, I might as even go as far as seeing if I could wire up the ATO, the light, everything, and just have the thing 100% battery backup so it can, you know, run for 24 hours or however long it will last off of the battery backup. And yes, it is that easy to create backup power for your pumps. And again, backup flow is very important. That is what's going to save your coral. That is what's going to save your fish. So I'm a big advocate of having backup power. Now again, the caveat with this is this is backup power. It's not necessarily a battery backup in this state. However, you could put on a battery charger and the battery charger would essentially feed through there and power all your pumps. And then when the power is out, it would automatically go to the battery. This can take anywhere from nine to 20 volts in. So if you're charging this at 14 volts, it's still only outputting 24 volts. And that would be a very simplistic solution. Um, I'm gonna try that later, I haven't, but I think that'd be a super duper simple solution. I've also been toying with the idea of wiring this into a relay so that when the power goes out, it automatically flicks over. And then I wouldn't have to have the battery on a charger per se. It could just kind of default over and then just, you know, top off your battery every few months. But there's a few different options that we can do. And we'll dig into that in kind of the next video when I eventually make this tank 100% battery backup powered. But again, it's a super duper easy project, you know, fairly inexpensive for all these parts. Um, if you're buying a battery, I would suggest the lithium iron phosphate because they're going to last you years and years and years. You're going to get 10 plus years out of it. So you'll buy it once and be set for life. And again, they're, they're super light. They're super versatile. Love these type of batteries. Um, shout out again to Power Queen for hooking me up with this one. Super awesome one. If you do want to pick one up, I will have some affiliate links below. Thank you for supporting the channel by picking up through those links. All right, guys. As always, if you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you on the next video.